I was so happy to be invited to my cousin's engagement dinner. We were really close growing up and went to college pretty far from each other, so it was exciting to see him again. I brought my boyfriend as I wanted him to meet my extended family and assumed he'd be my date to the wedding. The first part of the dinner went well and my cousin's fiancé was absolutely delightful. Things went south after the main course was served, though. My boyfriend said he doesn't understand why gay people feel the need to get married and they make such a fuss over it when they aren't really married in God's eyes anyway. The whole table went silent and my cousin looked understandably hurt. This was a shock as we hadn't been dating long and we never discussed religion and he never said anything like this. I got up and asked him if he'd go with me outside to get some fresh air. When we got out there I asked him what the F he was thinking and he said sorry if I was too blunt. But he felt compelled to be honest. I said that's not something I will be able to move past and asked him to go ahead and leave the restaurant. When I returned to the table I apologized for his rude behavior and said he would not be coming back. My cousin said nothing and didn't even look at me for the rest of the meal and we all tried our best to keep talking throughout the rest of the meal but it was uncomfortable. After the meal I went to tell my cousin bye and apologized to him personally. Before I could he yelled at me and said I ruined a special night for him and how could I invite a bigot? Am I the asshole for allowing my wife to extern her maternity leave but not one of my other employees? I own a company and my wife has an executive level position at it. We elected to have a c-section and she went on maternity leave a month before she was scheduled for it. My wife expected that three months will be more than enough. However, after giving birth, we agreed that we'd only be having one child together because I already have three daughters. My wife was adamant about not missing a moment of our son's formative moments because she knew that he'd only be a baby for so long. When the time came for her to go back to office, I didn't have the heart to refuse her when she said she needed more time. She joined a mom-specific life coaching program and volunteered for unprivileged kids. After a year, people started asking when my wife was coming back. My wife discussed the fact that she had some light abdominal separation and wanted a tummy tuck, after which she was itching to get back to work. Around that time, another employee at the company had gone on maternity leave. Unfortunately, because she didn't work for the company for more than a year, she wasn't entitled to FMLA. She was given six weeks off for her birth and one week of which she took prior to the birth. Around a month ago, my wife went for the surgery and it went perfect. She did, however, take more rest for the surgery. Yesterday, after giving birth at home, Mary returned to the office and asked her manager if she could take more time off. I denied the request because her team was understaffed. Okay, story time about how I was betrayed by my best friend. So a little background information. I was 16 and in 10th grade. Okay, I'm gonna warn you a little bit. I was, um, to put it nicely, a little crazy in 10th grade. Summer was fun, but when baseball started up, I was having the time of my life. And it was too cold outside for bonfires, so we were having house parties instead. And since I went to a private school, everybody pretty much had money. So these houses were nice as fuck. Like there was probably not one house that we had a party at that didn't have a Lamborghini in the garage. Out here living my dream. And I had a low key psycho best friend named Amy. A little background information on Amy. Her and I were complete opposites but got along extremely well. She went to public school, I went to private school. Her home life was not the best. Mine was pretty good, I would say. And she did not live in the nicest area. She actually lived in a very dangerous neighborhood that I actually wasn't allowed in. But we had been best friends since the start of high school and we were pretty much invincible together. Until I threw a rager party at my house, which led me to tell my parents about her and I's drug problem. Um, she literally OD'd off coke at like 3 in the morning. And of course, I freaking panicked. So I called my parents and of course they were going to tell her parents about it. Like what kind of people would they be if they didn't? She would have had to go to the hospital either way and they would have found out what the hell she took. She was just acting very stupid about the whole thing and she literally did not talk to me for a whole month. Well then softball season came around and we started hanging out again. It was definitely nice to see her and get to talk to her but part of me still felt a little off about what happened before. For. But eventually we were back on our bullshit again, doing drugs 24-7. I will say that it wasn't nearly as bad as last time, for me at least, but it was still kind of bad. It got to the point where we were bribing her brother to give us clean piss every week because we both got drug tested on Sundays. 
Eventually summer starts to creep up and Amy and I talk about possibly going on a trip together because every summer at the beginning my parents would plan a trip for us to go to the Hamptons for a long weekend which in reality it was about two weeks. Anyway she offered to come with me and that being said she got all pissed off for me not wanting to ask my parents to buy her plane ticket because every time like she was over my house pretty much 24 7 even this time around and they would pay for everything for her anytime that we went to the mall my mom would give her money and stuff like that and my parents and i really weren't on good terms because i was being drug tested 24 7 so it just wasn't a good idea for me but it got to the point where she was like yelling at me and stuff like that so i just decided to ask my parents and they said sure she can come but she has to be drug tested her parents have to check her bags before she comes and everything like that which is kind of understandable like you did od at my house so why are you mad well that one um really set her off she texted me telling me that i should kill myself we're not friends we were never friends blah 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 just a whole bunch of fucking bullshit so of course i text her being the adult one and i tell her to calm down and we will talk about it when i get back because i had planned to talk to her about it so Sooner than later, I talked my parents into getting me a flight home early. Well, this is where things start to get a little crazy. And by a little, I mean a lot. And you get to see why a crackhead bitch will always be a crackhead bitch. So, the day comes where it's time for my parents and I to leave. We go to the airport. And my dad loves to show up to the airport early. For what reason, I don't know. He's just one of those freaking people well i guess that our plane had hit some birds or something like that so our flight was delayed about 10 hours and we only lived like 25 minutes away from the airport so we just decided to go home sleep and get a snack so we drive home and when we get to my house we see two cars at the top of the driveway weird right yeah but then we also saw that all of our lights were on in our house so at this point we're sitting at the bottom of my driveway and we had like our driveway was super long so we were sitting all the way at the bottom and you had to go all the way up to the house like that so my dad decides to call the cops and we back down to the beginning of the driveway and we block the entrance slash only exit well i guess they heard us because we saw people running out of the house and literally trying to leave in their freaking cars they hit my dad's car trying to get out of the driveway well as one of the cars drove past it was a car that belonged to this guy that amy had been talking to by talking to i mean fucking well back after her drug overdose when her and i stopped being friends she started hanging out with these seniors who were definitely not good news and when we became friends again she would hang out with them less but anytime that i was busy those were her go-to people so i told my parents about it they talked to the cops so the cops sent somebody to go and follow up on that but they told us that it could be a while before they actually find anything i, I don't know i don't know they just said that it would take a while for them to catch these people probably well, they
realized a bunch of our shit was missing. Like they must have got there as soon as we left. All of our jewelry, designer clothes and stuff like that, fine china, it was all taken, it was all gone. Our house looked like a fucking tornado whipped through there. And like I said, Amy knew these people, so of course I call her and ask what the fuck is going on because I refuse to hang out with these kids whenever she asks me to, so I don't know them from a fucking hole in the wall. So later that day, we didn't end up going to the Hamptons, by the way, obviously. But later, I'm on Snapchat, and I see a black screen posted on Amy's story that says, the only way not to get stabbed in the back is to take away the knife. What the fuck are you talking about, you delusional ass bitch? Eventually, we get a call from the cops later, and they are outside of Amy's house. Apparently, when they pulled up, they were looking up the value of all of our china. Like, girl. What the fuck made you think that you can sit outside on your porch after you just robbed my house and get away with that shit? She just has a few screws loose. Literally. At this point, I honestly thought the whole thing was funny. The two dudes actually had to serve three months in juvenile detentions and Amy had to do six months at rehab for setting the whole thing up as well as being a crackhead. She cried her eyes out in court and said that her life was hard and she was just jealous of me. Then she said she was forced to do it, yada, yada, yada. Her parents sent her to military school after rehab and I stopped using drugs all like that. Now they're just an occasional thing. I'm on my senior year of high school now and definitely learned my lesson about backstabbing. Story time about how my husband is threatening to cheat on me unless we have a three person sexy time, if you know what I mean. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's sending me an Instagram. My husband and I have been married for five years. The first year we were together, we had kids. We have two kids now and they are my priority. A year ago, my husband started complaining about how I don't pay any attention to him anymore. I started doing my best to try to give him more affection and just more time with me, but it's so hard with the kids. My husband does help me with the kids, but he works a lot and goes to the gym a lot. So when he's not home, it's basically my responsibility to do everything for the kids. They never tell you how hard it is to have kids and how hard it is to look after yourself and your relationship. I suggested we have date nights, but we still haven't gone on any. I told him that we should just go to the beach and hang out on our own, but he kept making up excuses. A month ago, he asked me if I would ever consider having